Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing, and today we're back looking at Point Blank, new design from Sean Drillinger, coming soon from Lock and Load Publishing, and we're actually going to do some gameplay today. We're actually going to see how all these fabulous cards and all these mechanics that we've talked about in the past, how they all flow together and how the gameplay actually goes. I'm actually a little bit excited. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the tutorial tutorial scenario, scenario one, which is kind of a, just a, a generic meeting action. A small platoon of U.S. infantry teams up with a squad of airborne and a single Sherman looking to secure a bridge needed for the Allied advance. Germans had the same idea and dispatched a similar force to capture the same bridge. Well, that seems pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and set this to side and let's first of all take a look at uh any uh special rules that are and setup that we have to do for the scenario so the number of turns is there are two turns in the game two turns that means you go through the action deck twice and at the end when the last action card is pulled the second time through then you determine victory conditions and victory conditions in this scenario is whoever controls the bridge there we go right there and the bridge is put in sector c0 remember in the uh, uh the components video i was talking about how this central sector right here is kind of no man's land nobody gets to set up in it so that's kind of the the area between the forces so the bridge goes into c0 and then we have a clear card in b0 and a clear card in D0. And I also mention areas A and D, A and E are not used for this scenario. So we're just going to completely ignore A and E, and we're just playing in B, C, and D all the way one through four. And as you can see, this is kind of a long map. So we're going to be we're going to be shifting the camera around a, a little bit. I hope that doesn't bother too many people. I just don't have the setup here to be able to do, you know, a nice top down. I, I wish I did. I've looked at it. I've tried to get, you know, swivel arms, see if see if that could work. I bet it just hasn't worked out real well. So we're going to do what we can with this. All right. So we set up with the bridge and the clear um, in set up like that. And victory conditions is whoever controls the bridge at the end of turn two uh, will be the victor. Now, what does that mean? How do you control the bridge? Well, we kind of talked about this a little bit before. This is a victory point card. And as you can see, it's got the sleepy eyelid. And that's what I like to call it. So that means it's degrading terrain. So there are penalties for shooting through this. It is a terrain modifier of one, defensive terrain modifier of one. And we've got a black flag and two white flags. So basically to control it, we need one black flag and two white flags in the units controlling it. Now, white flags are usually in infantry forces. Black flags are ordnance and heavy equipment. So basically, two infantry squads in a tank. Although I will I will point out that there are some anti-tank weapons that infantry can carry, Panzerfaust, Panzerschecks, bazookas, that do count as ordnance. So that right there is the setup. Now, what have we got? Let's do the Americans set up first. And they start off with one airborne squad which is right here. Start off with one airborne squad, two infantry squads, which are right here. Uh, Lieutenant Cray. Now let's take a look at his leader special abilities. He can rally or ready. That's his special abilities. And, you know, he's a pretty good leader. He's morale of seven and a neg one modifier, so he's not a bad leader. Uh, and we have support. And again, you got to remember... Oops, three infantry squads. <laughs> There's the third infantry squad. I only showed you two earlier. Now, support. Again, I will point out, again, this is just a demonstration and a promo copy. This is not what the official final cards are going to look like, although the artwork is pretty much 100% set. Uh, I will, again, also point out with for the support weapons, you know you've got kind of this, this border on it. These cards will actually be miniature cards, and they will be cut to this inner side inner size right here. So these are support weapons that go on top of the squads. So we've got an M1919A4, which is the 30 cal air-cooled, and the bazooka. And then we also have an M4A1 Sherman. Very cool. Now they set up first. Now first off, what we got to do is the Sherman sets up in a set position. 
they set up in space C4. So they are quite a few spaces away from the bridge and from the German forces itself. Also, part of the scenario special rules are any unit that sets up gets to draw two terrain cards. So we've got terrain cards here. So let's go ahead and shuffle the terrain cards up a little bit just so, you know, there's no question of malfeasance on my part of, of stacking the deck or anything like that. So part of the scenario special rules, and like I said, this is just for the special rules for this scenario. This isn't in each scenario. Go ahead, draw two terrain cards, flip them over, take a look at them, and decide which one you want to go with. So we've got a clear or a woods. Yeah, let's go ahead with the woods. Let's start the tank. Well, maybe not. Woods, I think if vehicles uh, need to move out of woods, they have to check for bog. Let me take a look at the player aid card with the... Uh, woods, uh, defensive can be refused. Check for bogging. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to have to check for bogging if I want to move out of those woods and we all know how my dice rolls are going. So instead, let's go ahead and just go with the clear. Now I don't have to put the clear there. I mean, if no terrain is there, it's, it's indicated that it's, it's clear terrain anyways, but just for proprietary sake, we're going to go ahead and leave the clear there. And so that means when my Sherman moves, I don't, we, you always roll for bogging when you move from a terrain, not when you're moving into a terrain so yeah let's let's just make sure that i don't get stuck with having to uh roll a bog check for the first time the sherman moves also so now the rest of the infantry support that i have set up in b2 c2 and d2 uh so let's go ahead now uh, we got three infantry squads, so let's just go ahead and put one infantry squad in each, just because I like to be, uh, uh, my OCD demands it. Uh, let's go ahead and put the airborne squad in the middle with an infantry squad. Let's go ahead and put Lieutenant Cray in there. Let's put the machine gun, the, the 30 cal on the left. Now normally these would go right out, let's go ahead and put it on top. And let's go ahead and put the bazooka with them. Now... Since we've got those three units out, the and due to scenario special rule, let's go ahead and see what terrain we get. So let's go for the the guys with the thirty cal first. Uh, we got a stone wall or a road. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the stone wall just because you know zero terrain effects modifier to two. So the thirty cal is set up behind this stone wall here. That's good. Get them into a good uh, defensive fire position to give uh, covering fire as the rest of the troops advance forward. Let's go ahead and check a look at uh, Lieutenant Cray. We've got a stone wall and a clear. Hmm, I think we're going to start them up behind the stone wall just because you don't want you guys out in the open to get shot up. <laughs> and the poor squad on the right flank. Uh, brush and brush. Well, no, that's not much of a difficult choice to make whatsoever, is it? He's going to be brush. Okay, that's the U.S. forces. Now, German forces are almost pretty much identical. They start off with one SS squad right here. These guys are armed with Sturmgewehr 44s. Uh, they have three line infantry squads. So three regular infantry squads right there. Let's take a look at the leader is Lieutenant Viana. Now he's not quite as good as the American leader, but he has the same abilities of rally and ready, uh, but he's only a morale value six as compared to Lieutenant Craze of seven. And then for their support weapons, they've got basically the Panzer Shrek. <laughs> and an MG42. Now, this is where, where the difference is a little bit in support weapons. The MG42 is better than the 30 caliber. As you can tell, range of four on the 30, range of five on the MG42, two firepower for the 30 cal, three firepower for the MG42. And for armor, well, the Germans get a PZ3J, which is severely outmatched uh, by the... Uh, M4A1 Sherman. So let's go ahead and the Panzer 3J starts up in the Germans C4, which is way over there. So let's go ahead and grab, again, by scenario special rules, go ahead and grab two terrain cards. What do we got? We got, whoops, that's, that's three cards. Well, let's go ahead and put that one back because we didn't see that one. So we've got a marsh and a clear. Um, yeah, I don't think we're getting, now see marsh is negative two, so it's a lot easier um, now, Craig, now technically it says units may not refuse, but this is not, this is, that is only during movement. Um, and Marsh is definitely after check for bog, so we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and put the clear way down there in C4 and the PZ3J down there as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the clear there. 
and the PZ-3J there. Now, the German infantry sets up just like the American infantry in their B2C2D2. So I think just because I lack too much originality, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and do a mirrored setup. Infantry squad and SS in the middle with the leader. And actually, let's do it a little bit backwards this time. Let's put the uh, infantry squad with the Panzerschreck on this flank and the infantry squad with the MG42 on this flank. All right, so there we go. Now we also have to draw cards to see what their starting terrain is. Let's start off with the uh, Panzerschreck armed infantry. Uh, we've got woods and a wood building. Um, yeah, wood building sounds good for them. So we'll put the wood building right there. And the next two for the middle infantry of Lieutenant Vanna, we've got woods and a brush. Yeah, we're going to go with the woods because that provides the most cover. Now, if you notice, the woods and the building have got the, uh, the, the closed eyelid, which means they're blocking terrain. So you can't see through them. And we'll get to how line of sight works when we start doing stuff. Now, the MG42 on the end, watch me draw two clears. Uh, wire in a wood building. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to go with the wire. Uh, we are going to go with the wood building. So from the looks of it, the Germans have got much better defensive positions than the Americans do. But that's okay. Tides of war will change things. All right, so now what we do is each side gets five cards. So we're going to go ahead and draw five cards from the action deck. And let's go ahead and shuffle these up a little bit. Again, so no accusations of malfeasance or cheating or card stacking on my part. Right there. And we go five of each. One, two, three, four, five. Put this over to the side the draw and the discard which we're going to be we're going to be pulling cards from the terrain deck here uh, and again just as kind of an uh, action cards and we've got uh smoke cards and wreck markers mines and stuff like that here and then uh, extra victory point cards that were not being used and all the counters off set off to the side and on this side let's go ahead and move the rule book over to the other side of the table where it'll be easiest for me to handle here are all the player aid cards right here and here's the German cards. We'll keep the German action cards on the right-hand side, and we'll keep the American action cards on the left-hand side, just so we'll make it real easy. Now, initiative. Who determines? Sometimes it's decided by scenario. Other times it is, uh, it is determined, it's randomly determined. So how do you do that? You just start right up. Let's go ahead and let's go through. Uh, okay, so let's determine who actually goes first. Um, and basically, it's just a d6 roll for both sides, although you're not really rolling dice. You can roll dice, and I will say this right now, that if you do choose to roll dice, whenever you roll a dice instead of drawing a card for a number, make sure to remove the number. So if you roll, remove the number of cards that you rolled into the discard. So if you're rolling one dice, make sure you pull the card and put it into the discard. However, we're not going to be rolling dice because as everybody knows, my dice rolls hate me. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do everything from the action draw deck, which is right here. So uh, we'll pull first. Uh, this will be the American initiative, a one, and then the German initiative of five high dice wins. So Germans will get the initiative. So we'll put those and those become part of the discard right there, right? Like it's so easy. And if for any reason both sides pull the same initiative number, it is whoever had initiative last retains initiative. Oh, I always get so thirsty when I'm doing this. I speak so fast. All right. So the Germans are going to be going first and they're set up right there. So let's go ahead. And let's go procedurally through order what happens. Okay, so every impulse, you have the upkeep phase. This is conducting actions that were, the finishing off actions that were started in previous turns and just checking, you know, everything that you need to do at the beginning of each person's impulse. Okay, resolve melee and overrun attack. So you initiate a melee and overrun, but you don't do it until your next turn. 
Again, is this kind of abstract? It's representing the time it takes for you to move into position and set up the attack. So if you want to do a melee or overrun, you start it on your impulse. It flips back over to the enemy's impulse. They do their impulse. Then it flips back to you. And then you resolve melee and overrun attacks. Uh, then the second thing you do is resolve terrain placement. Movement uh, as well as resolving melee and overrun attacks takes place in the previous, you start it in the previous turn. So uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> we'll just resolve terrain placement. Uh, blazing terrain morale checks. So if any troops are in a blazing terrain, they have to take morale checks. Ready all spent leaders. Leaders can do their actions each impulse. So yeah, leaders can do do their their special ability, you know, whatever their special abilities, rally or ready, once per impulse. So whenever, if you decide to use their action, you, you, you spend them. And then at the beginning of each impulse, the leaders are readied again. Uh, conduct any checks to unbog a vehicle or AFE. So if you get a vehicle that's bogged, then you, then you conduct, then you unbog it. Uh, button or unbutton AFEs. Transfer support weapons, combine half squads, and combine squads. So that's all in the upkeep phase. And this happens each impulse. Most of the stuff you're not going to be doing from turn to turn, but it's a good idea to, to know it. So we'd have none of that to do for the Germans. And let's go ahead and point at the Germans way down there. Let's go ahead and kind of zoom in the camera so we can get a better look at the German forces down there. All right. Next. All okay, right. Maybe we won't because... That takes away from looking at the card. All right, so now we get into the core of the gameplay. Impulse phase. Conduct actions. Play an action from your card from your hand on a unit, a unit in a stack or a stack of units. It's very important. So if you play a card, it can either be on a unit, a unit in a stack, or a stack of units. Uh, and then you will do that action. Uh, or you can spend an action, discard a card from your hand to execute an action from a printed action icon listed on the unit's action list. Only one unit may be ordered this way. So basically, if you have a card or if you have an action that you want to do with the unit, but you don't have a corresponding card, you can <coughs> just spend that action and do that action it doesn't matter what type of action card it is. It could be a sniper card, but if you want to do a fire, but you don't have any fire cards, you can have one unit fire by spending one action card, uh, and then you discard that card. Uh, you can dis discard one card from your hand. You don't have to do anything. Maybe maybe you just want to start going through your cards, or you're just waiting for the opponent to, uh, to, to try to step into some brilliant trap that you've designed. Um, you can discard your entire hand, and you can do that once per game turn. Now, remember, a game turn is one time through the action deck. Uh, so you can do that once per game turn. Uh, discard a card from your hand to cancel a movement action for any units in one stack that is marked as moving. Uh, again, this is kind of we're getting back to, to how movement works, and I'll get into that fully. But sometimes you, you initiate movement as an action, but it doesn't complete until your next impulse. Sometimes you don't want to do the movement so or finish off the movement because tactical considerations change. You can discard a card to cancel that movement action. Uh, you can discard a card to reduce one fatigue level from one, un one unit. That is very important. Units can build up fatigue real quick and they start getting too much fatigue and they can't do anything uh just uh, draw up to your hand size and this occurs at the very end of your impulse so however many cards that you use you're going to draw back up to five now we've also got the turn in phase which is when you go through the action deck one single time uh then you go through the turn in phase uh check to see uh, if the action card deck has been exhausted, if yes, remove all mar spotted markers from un all units in play, exception to those that are in the midst of completing a move, assault, or melee action. They will be marked appropriately, and when their move immediately is resolved during the upkeep phase, they retain any spot markers in incurred by the action. So, yeah, it, again, you kind of have to spot units to be able to see them. Um, most of the time, you spot them because the opponent is doing actions, and we'll get into that. But at the end of the turn, all actions, all, all, all spotted markers are removed. Uh, all units that are spent are now readied. All units in play may reduce fatigue one level. Any blaze markers on terrain that are active in the game are removed and replaced with a smoke marker. Any smoke markers active in the game are removed. At the end of a player turn, after any D6 resolution is complete, remove all smoke markers and then check victory conditions. Check to see if you have won the scenario. So pretty straightforward sequence of play. And that happens, like I said... The upkeep phase and the impulse phase is what you're going to be spending most of your time doing during each impulse. And the turn-in phase, you really only have to worry about when you go through an entire deck. 
So that card is kind of important. The other card that I keep handy for the for most everything is the Point Blank Player Aid Card Four, which has got all the actions, all the game icons. All this, this, since it's an icon driven heavy game it takes a little bit to i've got most of these memorized i know what most of them are but i still get confused every once in a while so i like having this and so like ah, yeah a fire attack conduct a fire attack action in addition to any other action within your player impulse so yeah that if i play a fire attack that tells me fire attack now if i also want to see the rules for fire is rule section 8.4 so you know exactly where in the rule book to look at look for things all right so let's go ahead and take a look as uh, so we got the germans to go first so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit just so we can see the Germans a little bit better. And let's take a look at the cards they've got. Okay, we've got we've got a Rally Ready. Uh, that's always a good card to have. We like that. That is a ready action, so uh, we're going to go ahead and hang on to that as well. We've got one Fire action, and we've got one Move action. and But we've also got a Spotting action. So... This is a good card to have because it, the, 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 the Recon card... Let you do one of three things. It allows you to try to spot an enemy unit. You can use it to check the terrain deck. The terrain deck right here. It'll let you draw two terrain cards and you can hold one of them and keep them in your hand. Which is really, really good if you get some good defensive type terrain cards. Um, because that it works in conjunction with how movement works. So we're, we're So that's good to have. So I've got two readies, one rally, a move, a fire, and a recon. You know what? Um, let's go ahead and do the recon first. Let's go ahead and play the recon card. So we go ahead and take the card. We discard it, and we're gonna we're not gonna try to spot an enemy unit because I really don't care about spotting the American units at this time. But however, I do want to go ahead and pull two terrain cards from the terrain deck, and I get to look at them and clear and road. Great. Was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, but you know what? And we get to keep one of these. Let's go ahead and focus. We get to keep one of these cards. Um, so let's go ahead and keep the road. We'll discard the clear. And we're just going to go ahead. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put it into the hand. Just for now. Just so we know that we've got a road card. I wish you would focus. There we go. Uh, we got the road card in our hand. And so we can actually play the road card. Uh, we can We can play it. Uh, on an opponent. We can play it out at any time. So there are tactical, or you can actually use it as a uh, placing it as a terrain card when you move a unit rather than drawing from the terrain deck. So, okay, we'll go with that right now. And so that's going to be the German action. Um, and at the end of the turn, they draw up to their hand size of five. So I'm, what I'm going to do, since I'm playing head to head, what I'm going to do is any cards that I draw, I'm just going to put face down on the deck so I don't know what they are. So that kind of gives me a little bit of a fog of war, and I, I don't know exactly what both sides are going to have from turn to turn because there's always going to be a little bit of a card difference. So I found that that seems to work best for any 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 type of card games. Uh, Command and Colors, Ancients, I do that. Uh, and Well, any of the Command and Colors, uh, I do that a lot. I will, uh, I will not look at the cards so I can't really formulate too far ahead because there's always unknown elements in the cards. So that's the German phase. German phase is done. Hey, you know, if I wasn't explaining that, that could have been done in a few seconds. Flips back over to the American phase. Now, since it's the American phase, they start at the top with the upkeep phase and they go through everything. There's nothing they need to do because there's nothing done from last turn. And then we go into the impulse phase. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, what the Amis have. We got an assault card. I don't think we're going to be needing that anytime soon. We've got a unit action card. That lightning bolts are really cool because lightning bolts can be used as anything on a card. So we take a look at the Sherman right here. Say, for whatever reason, we didn't have any icons that matched the Sherman and we wanted to do the Sherman. We could play the lightning bolt, which is a unit action and we could do any of those that they have so this is a good one to hold on to so we're going to put that at the back of the deck because that's kind of your your ace in the hole card the, the, to do something that uh, uh if you don't have a card for and we've got two close assault and overruns again we're not oh man we're very heavy on the assault and overruns but not so much on anything else so we're going to try to probably want to dump the uh, some of these cards uh uh, early so really right now the only card we got we've got a recon oh that's good 
So we've got a move and a recon. And when you have an action card that has two symbols on it, you can do both of them. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to play this card with the move and the recon order. And you can do it in any order you want. So I think what we're going to do first is we're going to do the recon and we're going to take a look at two terrain cards. And we've got a woods and a or clear and a brush. Okay, well, we'll keep the brush. Now we'll go ahead and put that into the American deck. Like so. Uh, so, okay, now we're going to do a move. Okay, this is how movement actions work. So we'll go ahead and discard that card. We're going to choose one of our units to do a move action. And let's go ahead and be a little bit, be a little bit gutsy. And we're going to have Lieutenant Cray in his units right now. Now, we're going to nominate. He's going to be the one that's going to move. So what you do is you take a moved action and you place it on the sector that's moving. And you place the arrow towards the sector you want to move to. It's not too tough to tell. It's like, all right, are they moving forward, left, right, or back? You're kind of telegraphing your action, so you know where your opponents are going to try to move. This is also what I was mentioning, that you could, in the future turn, discard a card from your hand to cancel a move action. If tactical considerations change and you decide you don't want to move forward with them anymore, then you can just discard a card to get rid of that movement card, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, so he is going to be moving, and what I also want to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to throw out some smoke. I want to, I want to throw out some smoke. All squads can uh can can uh well not all squads let's check to make sure let's take a look at the icons yes the airborne squad can do smoke and the u.s infantry squad can do smoke so we're good with that so as part of a move action we're going to try to throw out smoke smoke is real easy you just go ahead and say you're throwing it out. so to check for a smoke action it's just a simple dice roll check or a dice check uh so you go ahead and draw an action card number and if the number is four better up uh, it goes off. Well, we rolled it. We pulled a one. So there is no smoke marker. Now, if I want to, I can choose to elect to negate that move at this point because, well, the smoke didn't go out and maybe the troops decided they didn't want to move. However, I think I'm secure enough in the fact that, you know, I'm already in behind a stone wall and that terrain will take place when I get shot at. So I'm, I'm confident that I will be able to pull it off. So I'm not going to go ahead and uh, cancel the move action right now. I'm just going to go ahead and continue with it. And so that will be the end of my turn because I played the move action. We tried to pull the smoke. It didn't work. So that's it. I've got four cards. I got four cards plus the terrain card in my hand. So I go ahead and pull another card. But let's just go ahead and put it on top like that. Now let's switch back over to the Germans. And I think the Germans are probably going to want to shoot... <laughs> And the Americans while they're moving. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, we've got a uh, concealment card, which is good if you're being shot at. All right, so let's take a look at our cards. Let's go ahead and put this to the back just because. All right, so we're going to fire. We're going to fire. We're going to fire. So we go ahead. We're going to play the fire card. Now we need to determine who is going to do the shooting. So first of all, it's going to come down to range. I mean, honestly... I'm kind of far away, so honestly, it's, it's either going to be the tank or the MG, because that's probably about the only ones who... Actually, I don't even think anybody has range. All right, so let's go take a look. How is range figure? Let's go ahead and put the German shoot ac fire action card back over there for a moment. Okay, it's real easy to figure out range. If you're going from sector to sector, in other words, C1, C0, C2, if you're going horizontally... One space is one range increment. If you have to move over from one area to another area, like C1 to D1, that is two range increments. So let's go ahead and see. These guys right here have a range one, two, three, four to where the, the Americans are moving. And unfortunately, yeah. Uh, so the infantry squad is range three and the SS squad is range two. They don't even have range. I could fire the bazooka, but I don't think I want to do that. And the infantry up there is a range three. So really, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So nobody has range except for the tank way back there. And all right, well, let's see if we can fire with the tank. The tank will be one, two, three, four, five, six range of increments. So it'll be at long range. However, to figure out line of sight, now there's five ways to figure, there, there are five different states, five different states you can be in with, uh, with, with checking for line of sight. 
different side of the well yeah different side of the map different sector so if you're saying firing from b3 to the german c1 that's one state of line of sight figuring out you could be same area same column different sectors so like say b1 to b1 it'd be another line of sight state that you have to check for uh the third state is if both of you are on the same in 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 the middle zone in the no man's land uh the fourth state is same side different sector different area so like if i was firing from b2 to c1 that would be a different line of sight state that you'd have to check for and then the final line of sight state that you check for is same side, same sec, same area, different sector. So like from B2, B1 to B2, B1 to B2. Um, but for right now, most of the time, until you actually start pushing across the opponent's side, the two you're going to be checking for most of all are, is different areas or different sides, same area or different areas. So for this state, if we want the German Panzer, just make sure I can even see German Panzer to firing at Lieutenant Cray here. That'll be different side, same area. And basically you just draw a straight line to the zero area and check to see if there's any blocking or degrading line of sights between there. So since we're both in the same column, we basically take where we're sitting at and draw a line to the C0 sector. Okay, unfortunately... For the German Panzer, it's going to be going right through that, what is that, uh, stone wall? No, woods, woods space. Woods is blocking line of sight, so that would block line of sight. However, from the, from, the, from, from the American side, they draw from there, because they're the target, to the zero sector. It's clear. So it would be clear line of sight there, but the German Panzer has the block line of sight from those woods. Now, for example, if those woods were not there, or if it was another, if it was, well, if it was another degrading, you'd have two degradings and two degradings block line of sight. But if that was a clear hex, then the German line of sight from his space to the zero sector would be clear. The zero, the, the, the line of sight from the target to the zero sector would be clear. Line of sight would be clear. So that's, that's basically how you check line of sight if you're in the same area. What if you were in different areas? Like say if that German panzer up there wanted to fire at these the uh the 30 caliber again you would take from the fires sector to the zero sector in the area that it's in how unfortunately eh, because of the woods are there it's blocked and honestly you again it's taking it from the target sector to the zero sector to see if the line of sight is clear it would be clear here because there's no intervening terrain to the zero sector but there is intervening terrain from the firing to its zero sector. Again, it, it, this is probably one of the, the, the most detailed uh, uh, rules that you're going to have to learn because it really goes off of kind of an abstract line of sight system. And it's kind of something that we've never really seen before. Uh, even up front had a much more simple line of sight than this. So as long as you can learn those five sectors or those five states of being for checking line of sight, you're going to understand line of sight really easy. It's a little bit confusing at first. I'll admit it. I struggled with it. I sat down and I talked to Sean with it, but eventually I did figure it out. Most of the time, it's just going to be checking from the fire sector to the zero sector and checking the target sector to the to their zero sector as well. Because you got to remember A0, B0, C0, D0, E0. Um and if there is intervening terrain between those two row or two those two columns, then the line of sight is blocked. Again, it gets a little bit more funky if you're both on the same side of the board. But if we get to that, then I'll then I'll point out the rules to that. But once you get that line of sight down, um, you're, you're not going to have any problems. So basically, pretty much everybody is. Uh, Everybody is out of line, of, out of line of, out of range, except for the Panzer III. Unfortunately, the Panzer III is blocked by those woods right there. All right, so we're not going to be able to do a shoot. Let's see what else have we got. Um, well, all right, fine. We'll do a move. Uh, let's see. What do we want to move? Uh, you know what? Let's move the Panzer up. Let's go ahead and move the Panzer up. So let's go ahead and discard that card. And we're going to put a moved marker 
on the German Panzer and we're going to move it one area closer. Let's see if we can get him up into, into a better position so he can start getting some line of fire on stuff. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that'll, that'll be good. All right, so that's basically going to be it for the German Impulse. It's done. Flips back over to the American Impulse. Oh, let's go ahead and make sure we fill up the German hand back up to five. We'll put the card uh, face down so I don't know what's coming. Uh, okay, so now we go into the, the American, and back into the American Impulse. Uh, resolve, resolve melee and overrun, resolve terrain placement. This is what we have to do right here. Okay, so now there's two ways. Since we are now moving, we are going to complete that move, but we need to see what type of terrain we're going to be moving into. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do this. We can either play one of the cards, whoops, play one of the cards that we have in our hand, uh, and just because we've reconned it out and we know what's coming. Or we can draw a card randomly from the terrain deck and use that as our card. Um, I mean, I could get something better. I mean, right now with the brush hex that I've got, I mean, it's it's not the best. It's a, it's a one terrain modifier and it is degrading terrain. Um, I could get something better. I could get a clear. I could get worse. I could end up with a stream. I could end up with a marsh, which could really hurt, hurt me. So I, what I think we're going to do is we're going to play uh we're going to we're going to go ahead and draw now now let's, let's not be too let's go ahead and place the brush card so we're going to move into the brush terrain we remove or actually yeah we we take the units we move them into the brush terrain we remove the moved marker flip it over to the spotted side and so now that unit is spotted so now they can see that I'm moving or have moved and I am now spotted so I can easily be shot at regardless of whatever terrain states that I'm in. Um, this stone wall will stay here for the time being. Terrain, does, terrain cards do not disappear unless you get into a situation where there's nobody adjacent in uh, diagonal or uh, horizontal. Then you remove them. Now, if you'll notice at the beginning of the game, the, the, these cards... Uh, uh, victory location cards never get removed. However, these two terrain cards started off with no. These are special rules. They stay there uh, until you try to move into them and want to change their state. Uh, and that's really the only way that they can change, I believe, according to the scenario special rules. All right, so we went, got ahead, made Lieutenant Cray. They got up into the brush. They're a lot closer now, and they are spotted so they can be easily shot at uh, with no issue by the Germans. All right, so... That is that action. Now, I still can play an action, though. See, that's just completing the movement from the last time. So this time, we got a fire and a recon card. We got a bunch of assaults. Uh, oh, the other thing. We moved. Pretty much any time anybody does anything, they generate fatigue. So if you're at fatigue level one, there's no real change to anything you do. When you hit level fatigue, fatigue level two... You, uh, it it's penalties to your movement, penalties to your shooting. And if you get a third fatigue point, you are then spent, which means anybody who becomes spent is turned sideways like that. And if they're tapped, okay, we can't use tap because of copyright conditions. If they're spent, they can't do anything until they're ready again. And there are ways to do that in with the deck, but let, you don't really want to get to that point. So these guys moved. So they built up one fatigue and they're spotted. So now what I can do is play an action. And I think what we're going to do is we are going to do discard a card from your hand. Oh, not that one. Di uh, da, 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 where is it? Discard a card to reduce one fatigue level from one unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these close assault and overrun cards because I doubt I'll be using them anytime soon. I'm going to go ahead and discard that to reduce the fatigue of one unit. So what we're gonna do is we've got two units there. We're gonna reduce the fatigue of the airborne squad. So the airborne squad is gonna, re we're gonna reduce their fatigue. So that means only the infantry squad is. Plus leader actions can be done in addition to anything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and spend the Lieutenant Cray to either do a rally or a ready action. We'll do a ready action and reduce the fatigue of the other infantry squad. So both infantry squads got their, got their fatigue reduced. Lieutenant Cray is uh, spent. 
and they're still marked with a spotted marker. Uh, let's go ahead and draw a card and put it on the top, flip back over to the Germans. Now, the Germans, during their impulse, we have to figure out what happens with that vehicle. Uh, now, they have got, what have they got? They've got a road card. Um, do they want to place the road card? No, we're not going to use the road card for the tanks movement yet. So we're going to draw a card blind from the terrain deck and we get a clear. Okay, so we can either leave it empty or now let's, no, I think procedurally we have to put it there uh, because again, the cards don't go away until nobody is adjacent to them. So that is, that is going to be a clear space. Uh, we remove the moved marker and we replace it with a spotted marker. Now, you remember how I just said pretty much anytime anybody does anything, they give a fatigue level. Well, vehicles, when they move, do not get a fatigue level at all. So it do, it's not that tiring for the crew when you're just, you know, sitting in, the, in, in your big box with a gun on it and just driving forward. So if you move... If infantry moves, they get a fatigue. If an infantry shoots, they get a fatigue. If an armor shoots, they get a fatigue. So those are three, three ways that you can get fatigue. But a vehicle moving on its own does not build up fatigue. All right. So that is done with that. And again, this is just impulse upkeep. So that happened. Now the Germans can do their action. What have they got? They got oh, they got another, ooh, another, another recon. Uh, can we shoot anything? All right. I think this time, one, okay, let's see if we can actually shoot this time, if we've got the range. Okay, so if we fire from the German uh, Lieutenant Werner, uh, checking line of sight, since we're different areas, same sector, we just draw to the zero sector. From here, it's clear. From there, it's clear, although, you know, all, well, it's degrading. So we have one degrading and then uh, a second degrading, or actually not a second degrading, but uh, the terrain effects modifier of one. Um, so from here to here, the line of sight is clear. From there to there, line of sight is clear. We have line of sight. It is range three, one, two, three. Uh, but let's see what the German machine gun is. It'll be line of sight is clear. Line of sight is clear. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, so the machine gun is in range as well. So let's see. We've got, we can either fire with the machine gun at three or fire from here up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the SS squad has only got a range of two. So it's not going to be able to reach. And the infantry squad has only got one firepower at range of three. So let's go ahead and fire the MG42. Uh, so let's go ahead and play the fire card. We discard it. We've already checked to see if line of sight is good. From the fires to its zero sector is clear. From the target to its zero sector, it is clear. Okay, now granted, it's, we do have this degrading that we do have to pay attention to. But that'll come into effect in a little bit. Again, we're checking range. It's one, two, three, four, five. So it's within range. So we've got three firepower that's blasting away at the, the Americans in that brush X. So how do you resolve combat? Well, there's a really cool table that we have right here. Infantry firing, ordnance firing, and... Then melee overruns, and then just the uh, effects table. So, firing at infantry marked as moved, assaulting our melee, gives the attacker plus one. We don't have that. Firing through degrading terrain, which we do have, that'll be minus one. Firing at range one, or in other words, point blank, gives you a plus one. Firing unit is marked with smoke. Leadership modifiers, vehicle MG, AF. Okay, so really, what, six, six modifiers you kind of have to pay attention to? <laughs> so, for this condition... We only have one condition that we have to worry about. Uh, firing through degrading LOS. So it is a minus one. So the German machine gun has got a firepower of three. Minus one is a two. Then you do a dice roll or a dice check, which comes from the action card, and add the numbers together. Oh, only got a one. So it's we're going to put that up there. So it's got a grand total of three. Now, the defenders do the exact same thing with tallying up their modifiers, but their modifiers is just pretty much whatever terrain effects modifiers in the space. That, that, that's really the only time that that's the only modifier the defenders get. We're in a brush hex, so that gives us plus one. So again, we're going to do a check, dice check. 
we got a one plus one. So the Germans got a three, the Americans got a two. If you're familiar with lock and load tactical, you're probably real familiar with this combat system already. But if you're not, you take the attacker's total versus the defender's total. If the attacker rolls higher, then something something could happen to the defenders. If the defender rolls higher, if it is equal to or the defenders roll higher, then nothing happens to the defender. But however, for this point, we've got a three versus a two. The Germans got higher. So it is a three to a two. What you Take the difference between the attacker and the defender, which is one dice roll, and basically make a morale check against every unit that's shot in there with a modifier of whatever the difference is. In this case, it's plus one. So you always start off with the leader. Leader's morale is a seven. So we have to add plus one to this. And if we get higher than the number, we fail. I can already tell you right now, the leader is not gonna fail. Because even if we ro even if we pull a six, plus one will be seven, which is equal to his morale, which is no effect. But you still gotta pull the cards anyways, because that's going through the deck. So we've got a one, plus one to the leader is going to be a two, which is less than seven, so there's no effect. So let's go ahead and pull these out. The airborne squadron and the infantry squadron are both six. Now, normally you would think, oh, but I've got a leader morale mod. No, you can't use the leader morale modifier because he's been spent. Can't use any leader mo morale modifiers unless they're in ready condition. So under normal second circumstances, if he'd have been ready, like so, I'd have been able to use his morale modifier. Unfortunately, in this situation, I can't. So, uh, so we do have to check against both of those. Again, it's just a dice roll plus one, and th there's a chance either one of those can end up becoming shaken, but more, not, more than likely not, because we're taking one, three plus one is four, which is less than his morale, so he's gone, he's okay. And then... Three plus one is a four, which is less than the infantry squad's morale of six. So he's okay as well. So those. Okay, so the German unit fired. He has now been spotted. Uh, so you just go ahead and take a spotted marker and put him on there. So he can be shot at freely now. Now, as you can tell, I did have a spotting marker on this unit, so that's why I didn't worry about if he was spotted or not, because since this unit had already moved, it was marked with a spotted marker, which means everybody could see it. The German unit just fired. It is now spotted, and it will remain spotted until the end of the turn, or into the end of the game turn when you go through the entire deck. Then all spotting markers get removed. But for right now, those two units, plus the, plus the German PZ-3 back there, are technically spotted. Although technically I can't see them because line of sight is blocked. They are still spotted for, you know, just, just for proprietary sake. If LOS was clear, I'd be able to shoot at them. Um, so that is the German turn. And let's go ahead and fill them up to five. Put that card on there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Americans. What did the Americans get? Uh, oh, oh, a shooting, a shooting and a recon again, but we've still got, you know, we've still got these two cards that I don't think we're going to be using anytime soon. So we've got a rally, which I really don't need because nobody's, oh, proprietary, beginning of the turn during the impulse phase, all leaders are set to ready again. So every turn, the leader can do something and they'll come back next turn pretty powerful if you ask me so use and abuse your leaders because they always gonna unless you want to save their uh their uh their leadership for like a shooting or something like that but yeah try to always activate your leaders as much as the the, the tactics of the game will allow and the strategic situation all right so we've got uh so we got a rally which we don't need we've got a f two fire and recons and then an assault and an overrun hmm. we need to get rid of the assault and the overrun uh, or I can just straight up shoot. I don't have any, you know what? I think we need to move some units into position. So I need some movement cards. Um, well, technically I could also just discard to do a card to do, uh, an action like so. So since I don't have any movement, although I do have the, the, the lightning bolt that now, yeah, I've got the lightning bolt, that can, which can do any unit action. So if I wanted to move the Sherman up, I don't have a movement card, but I could play the unit action card to do any unit action on there. I could do the move. Um, or I could discard a card 
do the movement action, but that I believe spins the unit. So, but I don't like having these cards in my hand because I'm not going to use them anytime soon. So let's just go ahead and discard a card. That'll be my action to just discard this card. Goes in. That'll be the end of my impulse. Pull a new card and put it straight on top of my deck. So I will be ready for the next turn. So we've gone about uh, close to an hour here. Uh, actually, it did not feel like it went that long. So we're going to go ahead and cut it right here. We are going to be continuing this playthrough uh, over the next few days. You will see the rest of this playthrough uh, put up on uh, the, up on the YouTube. So if you have, and I mean this, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I'll talk to everybody later. See ya!